in the recent budget, property tax is going to be increasing. How does it affect our investment philosophy? Yeah, I think it's something is very confusing. So let give let us give you some clarity. Okay, let's explore further. Two thousand years later. Hi everyone, I'm Ivan. <laughs> What's happening? <laughs> and I'm Sean. And today we're going to be talking about the property tax increase, right? And how is it going to be impacting property investment? Yeah, I think property tax is something that's actually pretty difficult to understand. Right? I think I never really, really paid too much attention to this whole annual value uh, property tax, right? Until much later in life, uh. So actually, when so so when when uh, measures like this happen, right? Say a hey, property tax is going to increase. I think it does create a lot of panic in the market. Okay, but I think the key here is that really understanding what does this even mean to you. How does it apply to you? And most importantly, what kind is like one bidder? How much is the rough annual tax? Uh, if you're landed, probably what's the rough annual value? Uh, I think let's, let's explore that further and discuss it. So the number one thing first of all, right, is to understand how is property tax calculated? Mm. And property tax, right, is actually being taxed on a percentage of mm. the annual value of the property. So yeah. how is annual value calculated? Okay, annual value right, is actually the estimated gross rental of the property if it was to be rented out. Yeah, so that's a very tricky part. Because let's say for example, if today in all your life you've been living, let's say in a four-room HDB, you will have pretty much no concept in terms of what's the annual value of a one-bedroom condo or a two-bedroom condo or a three-bedroom condo and so on and so forth. And therefore, it's very difficult to really understand does this annual value or is this property tax increment, how is it going to impact you when you're going to upgrade? So that's why there's a lot of um, so-called confusion in the market today okay and not to mention it's not like that it's somewhere that you can just log in and just type okay uh, let's say Queen's Peak Condo two bedroom what's the annual value it's just going to pop up to you then, guys this information is somewhat not transparent to you guys so it's very very difficult to, to understand yeah but you can take a rough guide right mm. for example if you look at the uh, the rental rates on property group mm. like how much people are trying to rent out yeah. their property and yeah. just maybe take a 5-10% to 10 discount on the rental rates yeah yeah I think I think that's a quite a good formula to go for. Yeah. So usually I tend to notice that annual value tends to be slightly lower than what is the real actual rental. The reason why is because when you go into somewhere that is a new condo, for example, right, this new condo will probably be the maximum rental across all the condominiums in that same area. Because it's new. Yeah. That being said, since that's the case, then the average they'll take a, a let's say a one year old condo. New, like brand new on the same street on the same street and then there's a five year old condo there's a ten year old condo and they actually take it as an average and that is why because it's very good to for you then that's why you can use a discount level of 10% even 15% sometimes right as a true or there's a quite accurate gauge of annual value mm, okay so if you take a look at this uh, chart right yeah. the property tax right for non-owner occupied residential property right for the first 30,000 is 10% and the next 15,000 is 12% and this is for tax rate that's in this year 2022 yeah. and uh, and before and moving forward right mm. from 2023 or 2024 right for the first 30k the, the, the tax rate the property tax rate is going to increase to 12 percent so yeah. when we look at a one bedroom like condo units yes. right sean what is like the the average rental that we will see and what is going to be the impact for this yeah i, I think recently the rental has gone up quite significantly i'm seeing rental rates of 2005 2006 2007 even for one bedroom but i don't think that will be the actual annual value mm -hmm. yeah because we also need to consider the other condos around which means that i'll probably put it as a 2000 to 2002 which means annual value is around 26 mm -hmm. yeah so which means that one bedroom will largely be not impacted. So 26k right, the increase is just gonna be like 2%. So 2%, if it's 26,000 yeah. right, previously the amount of property tax you had to pay is 2,600 because yeah. it was 10%. Yes. So with the increase from 10% to 12%, yeah. it's gonna be a $120 increase. Yeah, or $10 a month. Ah. Or ten dollar a month. So yeah. when you put it in real numbers, <laughs> right? Uh, it it maybe one less type peng lah. I mean, you know lah. <laughs> Your type peng is like the all it's the good three, stuff three, ah. Three, three meat, four three vegetable. Meat, one vegetable. Four vegetable. You can like three three dollar plus lah. I think that I mean, looking at this, uh, uh we know that uh HB is not gonna impact that. Mm. And the one bedroom condo units, right? Mm. Is insignificant. Insignificant. Mm. Which actually think about it is largely most people's investment non owner occupied choice lah. Mm. Right, of, 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 of one bedroom, right? And of course, for those that want to go for two bedroom condominiums as a, as a so called as a rental unit, um, you guys will be impacted a little bit. A little bit. Probably, if we do it in math, let's say I just want to do a quick calculation. Let's say your average rental is at 2,800. 
for a two bedder annual value, the shop's going to be like three hundred thirty three thousand six hundred lah. Mm. Yeah, and so what's really impacted is that three thousand six hundred lor. Mm. Yeah, which is going to be increased from increase like twelve percent to twenty percent to twenty percent for the portion of the three thousand six hundred lor. So if you really lose it in the mathematically right, it's three thousand six hundred. It's eight percent increase. Eight percent lor. So it's around like two hundred eighty eight dollar lah. Mm. So insignificant. I mean, I mean still money. Mm. Twenty dollar can can do a little bit of things per month, but. But I don't think it should in the overall context, la, if, if you decision, own a, you invest or not la. I mean if you own a million dollar pro- property, right? Yeah. Two hundred eighty eight dollars. Ah uh, guys, nah, don't let two hundred eighty eight dollars stop you from making your hundreds of thousand dollars. Uh. I mean that's the end conclusion. Uh. So but, what does this property tax right really impact? Let's take yeah. a look. If you're looking at the property tax value of like annual value hmm. more than sixty thousand, right? Hmm. That means uh it's gonna be like for example But it's gonna be painful. That's gonna be painful. You are staying in a yeah. four bedroom like a uh, condo unit yeah. or a very very large landed, right? Then you will hit this range. Yeah. So, for example, if you have an annual value right that is hundred and fifty thousand, mm-hmm. uh, that means your rental is about twelve thousand dollars a month. Uh. Yeah, 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 yeah. Your your property tax increase right will be from uh from twenty four thousand a month uh, a year to forty three thousand two hundred. Ouch! 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 That that's where it gets painful. Ah! Yes, but do remember that this is actually for non-owner occupied. Yes, uh, which means that you are purchasing it in purpose of renting it out, lah. Mm. So since you are renting it out, means that if you think about it, this scheme is very largely targeted at those who are able to afford their own home. Alright, let's say for example they're living in a four bedroom condo, and yet they still have enough funds to buy another three to four bedroom luxury condo, or even a landed property to actually rent it out. Mm. So I mean the the prob the probability of that or, or the number of people in Singapore who are in that category is not big lah. Mm. It's not big. So so when 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 you say this right, my take is that this scheme right or this uh property tax increase is actually targeted at the more affluent or the higher net worth, uh, yeah, yeah, and not targeted at the one bedroom, two bedroom, and lesser of the three bedroom like uh, condo units in Singapore. Exactly, exactly. So, so I think if today you guys have planned or your dreams actually to own two condominiums, that means one under your name, one under your spouse name, okay, then it's okay. I mean, if if, if you're staying in your own home, the big three four room bedder or, or does it doesn't mean the landlord, right? Later we'll touch on the tax rate. But if you're owning a one or two bedroom, don't need to be too worried about how will this impact you in terms of our right perspective. Mm. The the logic here is it doesn't impact you much actually i would say that it actually benefits it benefits why why we say it benefits okay because when you take a look at this right the yeah. four bedroom like condo owners right are going to be paying even more taxes right yes so let's say today i'm a buyer in the market yes would i rather choose to buy a three four bedroom unit or would i rather choose to buy a one two bedroom unit as an investment as an investment oh, then definitely most will choose one to two bedroom right? yeah so Which means that ah, demand it, it increases, increases for the one uh, two bedroom. Is, yeah, so yeah. it actually keeps a uh, three and four bedroom a little bit less or a little bit more affordable, la, No, you you it will it will dep- yes it, you, that's a that, that's a very less nice competition. Way of I would say that it will depress the market yeah, 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 la, for three yeah, yeah, temporarily bedroom. until people feel that this this property tax is the norm, la, Right? I mean. <laughs> uh, well, you see, right now we are talking about this in the context of ROI, yes. like in the, te- in the context of like yeah. non-owner occupied. Yeah. So as an investment, right, you know that your renter is going to drop, mm. right? And because of this, right, you will only be willing to pay lesser mm. for these mm-hmm. units. Uh. Mm-hmm. So, so uh, I mean, today, if I have a choice between buying a one, two bedroom versus a three to four bedroom, right? Yeah. I would rather buy the one, two bedroom and then deploy my funds right elsewhere. Ah, that's so, true, that's so, true. So, so um, I would say that the three to four bedroom prices have to come down a little bit. I think so and too. You go for the people who go for the one two bedroom. Yeah, so even yeah. though there's a one, there's a two percent increase in property tax for the one two bedroom, right? But it's fine. It's like two hundred eighty eight dollars. Uh, just time calculated for you. It's not high. Mm. All right. Or oh, the one bedder is like ten dollar a month. So but, it's ten but twenty dollar a month. But demand will increase. That's the main thing over here. So so where's the opportunity, right? So so with this property tax increment, mm. okay, I feel that in the next maybe six months to one year. I mean I mean people will take. Time to really understand what this means. Yeah. Mm. Unless you watch this video. Unless you watch right? this video, then congrats to you. La, huh? But the opportunity comes in to the one and two beders. I think we'll probably see a very nice increase in price point. Before we go on, right? Yeah. If you find value in this video, make sure you give us a thumbs up and also subscribe to this channel, okay? Yes, yeah, yeah, right. But let me share you one thing that I find a bit sad. What? You know, uh, our dear Core City Region. Uh, okay. It's getting hit after one measure over another announcement. I mean, it's so crazy. Eh? Right? Recently, of course, there is the foreigner ABS that comes in, the increment, and foreigners largely only buy core central region. Ma. Then next comes this budget of higher property tax. 
<sighs> I think it's going to be a very tough year for the core city region projects. Eh? Well, I own a, a unit right near yeah. the core city re- region, right? And I think it's fine uh, in the sense that uh, if, if you're if you owning a one bedroom or two bedroom, mm. then the property tax impact is not much. And uh, when it comes to property investment, right, we are being paid to wait. Uh, in the yeah, sense that yeah, yeah. properties but, but are income really generating. Uh, you already said something ma, near core CCR. Ma. I'm talking about the Orchard Road. <laughs> <laughs> or the uh, district 9, 10, 11 uh. You can I mean, buy a one, two it, bedroom in the Orchard Road. Yeah. But but I mean nonetheless, I mean it's this is still no matter what, it's still an um, impact. Uh. It's still an impact uh, because we know that this scheme or this property tax increase is largely targeted at the core city region now. And that, that it's not it's not targeted at the core city region, uh. it's targeted at the higher value higher uh, which, in, but which which also indirectly also target the Very core city region ma, which have the highest annual value ma. True. No matter one, two or three beta ma. So because of this, I mean, it's just another hit to it. And I think that because of this, there might be a even slower growth of my prediction. Uh. I think that it will be even slower growth. I mean, it's been slow there, but this is just another <laughs> new to the coffin <laughs> to CCR <laughs> region for at least the short term. Uh, short term, yeah. Sad, but anyway, that's life, right? Well, so, I, I would disagree with you, but <laughs> I will see that uh, I, I feel that I think moving forward in the future, right, uh, there will be a return to the office, uh, right? Yeah, 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 yeah. And with sure. the return to the office, right, then if you look at like, for example, the CBD area, mm-hmm. then people will be going back to work, working in the office, right? Then the demand for for housing in that area mm-hmm. will increase. So I, 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 I don't, I don't deny it for for non owner occupied, lah, mm. but for investment. That means non owner occupied lah. Yeah, that means non owner occupied lah for investment. I think all these costs is still a small barrier to overcome for regular investors. Mm. Yeah. So so because of this, lesser regular investors will start looking at core city region, and because of that, it does still strip off a little bit of demand of the CCR region, that will then of course maybe stagnant the price mm. in core city region. As someone investor, yeah. right, I will say that then this becomes the opportunity yeah. in so, so, so you got to see, right? I mean, if price start to drop in the core city region, I think that is something that you might want to take advantage of uh, because everything will become a norm one day. Mm. Yeah. So so it might take one year, it might take two years, it might take five years, but it will become a norm one day. Yeah, and when it becomes a norm, that is where people start looking into that opportunity again and of course, start, then price will start going up again. So perhaps that is an opportunity that you want to take a look out if there's any good price point uh, CCR projects. Mm. Yeah. How about the owner occupied? Do we see a huge change in it? All right. Yeah. Owner occupied, right? It's a very very good uh, information. But we'll talk about it in the next video. All right. Okay. So Let's once see again, I'm Ivan, you and I'm sure I will see you in the next video about owner occupied units, right? Because of the budget. We'll see you soon. Bye. Bye.